Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology in Module 8, Non-Infectious Diseases and Disorders. This is video number two, and we're going to apply what we've learned about homeostasis to the specific regulation of blood glucose levels. So in this video, we're going to focus on how we construct and interpret negative feedback loops that show homeostasis in the context of glucose. At this stage, you should already understand the concept of homeostasis. So what we want to do is expand on this, understand why glucose levels are important in living things, what sort of activities can uh, contribute to fluctuating glucose levels, and how our body responds to those different sorts of levels and uses this concept of negative feedback in order to maintain home homeostasis around blood glucose. So what we want to do is we want to talk a little bit about blood glucose. And so this is primarily about food and fuel. So food is what fuels our bodies. Our bodies require fuel uh, in order to carry out the very important process of respiration. And just like we might combust or burn fuel to produce heat energy, uh, we, we burn those fuels in our own bodies in order to generate the types of energy in the form that we can use uh, for our bodies to continue to function properly. And this is in the process of respiration. And the important um, source of that fuel is glucose. So it's glucose that gets broken down and then used, combined in a series of chemical processes in order to release the energy as ATP uh, in the mitochondria where respiration occurs. But that means we need a continuous supply of glucose. And it also means that certain activities when we're um, exercising, for example, our muscles are using a lot more uh, or requiring a lot more energy. They're going to need a lot more fuel. They're going to need a lot more glucose. And what they will do is they'll deplete the supplies. So how does our body know what's going on in terms of glucose levels? And what does it do in response to changes? Well, I guess the first thing that we need to look at is the fact that eating food is the best way of increasing your glucose levels. So as we eat uh, any of the complex carbohydrates, primarily carbohydrates, uh, primarily starches, are going to be broken down into uh, glucose. And that digestion starts in our mouths. And so that means that the smaller monomer units, the smaller glucose units can actually diffuse across from the um, digestive system into the bloodstream. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase blood glucose levels. What we need is an endocrine gland and the endocrine gland is the pancreas and the pancreas is going to release a hormone. So this is our gland and this is our hormone. So the hormone that's released is insulin. So as uh, if we were to kind of get a little bit of an idea of time against our blood glucose, then what we would like to see is a fairly constant uh, value. This is not going to be perfectly constant. The line's going to be kind of wiggly. And it's not going to be perfectly straight. But there will be times straight after we've eaten where the levels of blood glucose will start to rise. It's this rise away from that stable level that is going to stimulate the release of insulin. And it's particular types of cells in the islets of Langerhans within the uh, pancreas that are going to release the insulin. The insulin then is going to um, basically do a couple of things, but primarily what it's going to do is it's going to increase the take up of glucose by cells. So try and pull it out of the blood. So don't forget, because this is negative feedback, if something goes up, then we want to bring it back down. So the response to a rising glucose level is to try and take that glucose back out of the blood. So obviously the simplest ways to do that is to just increase the permeability of the cells to glucose. But obviously if they are already rich in glucose, then we need to store that excess glucose. We need to put it somewhere. And what we do is we store it as a, uh, 
again, a complex carbohydrate, a more uh, a larger molecule, which contains all of these glucose units, and we call it glycogen. And glycogen is our, our body's storage molecule for glucose. And so as the glucose is taken up by the cells and stored as glycogen in the liver, so the level of blood glucose will then drop back to um, its stable level. One of the problems with being in lockdown all the time is you kind of do eat all the time, uh, or at least a little more than you should. Um, but the reality is we don't eat all the time. So we have periods where we eat a lot and then we go for maybe hours where we don't eat anything at all. And this time of fasting, and sometimes we do that while we're exercising or while we're doing other sorts of activities that are going to require us to burn energy, going to require us to use that fuel that we've taken on and then um, burn it in the process of respiration to produce the energy that we need. And what that means is that our glucose levels, if we, if we kind of reproduce that little graph from before where we had the little increase when we were uh, eating, then we had the uh, injection of uh, insulin to take that glucose back out of the blood, and then we've gone back to sort of a stable level again. Now it's been a little while since we've eaten, and now we've started to um, use up all of the glucose that's in the blood. The levels are dropping. So what happens then? Well, the same sort of thing happens again. We've got a stimulus. So this is the stimulus that we have here. The stimulus is the lowering of the blood glucose levels. And this is again gonna stimulate the same um, gland, the pancreas. But this time, instead of releasing insulin to drive the levels down, it's actually going to release glucagon, which is another hormone. And this one is actually released by the alpha cells in the islets of Langerhans, and it's going to try and drive the levels back up. It's going to convert some of that um, glycogen that we previously stored when the levels were high in the liver back into glucose. So it's going to do the reverse of what it did before. And this is one of the reasons why when you're drawing these sorts of flow diagrams, if you're looking at homeostasis as your center, as what the body needs, then there's going to be occasions where you're going to have something that's going to have the levels rising. And then we want a response so that the levels will come back down again. And again, sometimes we're going to have the levels fall. And then we're going to again have a response in order that we can get back to our original levels. And this is why you find that these sorts of diagrams are always written as this kind of a figure of eights, as, as the double loops. Um, the central position, which is our stable homeostatic position. What happens if we get too high? How do we bring it back down? What happens if we get too low? How do we bring it back up again? So I've talked a little bit about these islets of Langerhans, which are particular types of cells within the um, pancreas. And there are two different, two main types of cells that we can recognize that are part of these islets. And they've, they go by the name of alpha cells and beta cells. And these two different types are the ones that are responsible for the secretion of these two very important hormones. So not a bad idea when you're doing uh, your study preparation for these to kind of split this into two halves. Look at what's happening when your blood glucose levels are too high on one side and too low on the other side. So when they're too high, we get that release. So that's the stimulus. The response is the release of insulin, which is going to act on cells in the liver, which is going to pull some of that glucose out and store it as glycogen. And that's going to bring our levels back down. And then when the levels are getting too low, if we haven't eaten for a while, if we've exercised a lot, we've used up our glucose supplies, the levels are dropping down. So now the alpha cells will release glucagon and that will stimulate the liver to convert some of the glycogen back into glucose, release that into the blood to uh, enable the, the blood glucose levels to rise again. It's really important for both temperature and uh, blood glucose levels that you have a couple of little simple diagrams that you could reproduce in an exam and talk about how these two very important um, components or aspects, requirements of our body are maintained at steady levels by homeostatic mechanisms. Thanks for watching.